In this screencast, we're going to look at the new inspections and intentions in IntelliJ IDEA 2018.2. Firstly, let's look at some of the features that are supported from Java 11. Java 11 introduces the idea of local variable syntax for Lambda parameters. Normally with Lambda parameters, you can include the type of the Lambda parameters if you wish. But you can also simplify these to remove the type completely. Now in Java 11, you have a halfway house of being able to declare these with var. This might not seem particularly useful since you can actually remove the type altogether. But let's consider this example. In this example, we want to add annotations to our parameters, but we can't do that without a type. Now we could add the full type, like we would have had to have done before Java 11. But in Java 11 now, we can change these to use the var keyword. IntelliJ IDEA is intelligent enough to figure out where we can use this and replace the types accordingly. As well as the support for var in Java 11, IntelliJ IDEA 2018.2 also improves the support for var from Java 10. Now you can use command and hover or control and hover over the var keyword and it will show you what type it is. You can also navigate to that type if you want. And you can use quick documentation on the var keyword to see what the type is. You can also use quick definition to see what the type is. This makes it easier to work with var. Inspections have been updated to make it easier to work with var in Java 10 and Java 11. Previously, if you declare a type with an initializer which isn't used, you get a warning. Now IntelliJ IDEA is intelligent enough to figure out that if you are declaring this type with var, the initializer is not redundant. Now let's look at other intentions and inspections in IntelliJ IDEA 2018.2. The first of these is the ability to add an exception to an existing catch block using the Java 7 multi-catch syntax. If I have code that throws an exception that hasn't been caught or declared in some way, I could previously create a new catch block or add that exception to the method signature. Now I have another option. I can add that exception to an existing catch clause. And if I have more than one catch clause, IntelliJ IDEA will prompt me to ask which clause to add it to. Another new inspection is the ability to locate code where items are being removed from a list that can be replaced with a list.clear instead. This should simplify the code and make it more readable. Other cases of removing from lists may actually be a bug, as in this case where we're iterating over a list and removing items from it at the same time. This means we're going to be skipping over items in the list. This might not be the intended functionality. IntelliJ IDEA 2018.2 adds the support to unroll decreasing loops. So if we have a for loop where we're counting down from some number, we can now unroll this loop and put each instance from inside that loop as a separate statement. This just mirrors the functionality that was already in IntelliJ IDEA, where we can unroll loops which count upwards. IntelliJ IDEA has plenty of intentions and inspections to help us work with Java 8 streams and with the updated collections APIs that have come in since Java 8. In 2018.2, we can now replace a map dot for each call, which would take a lambda expression, with a loop over the entry set. We might want to do this to make the code more readable or to understand what it was the code was trying to achieve. This should work for all types of for each calls on map. For example, here we can see the method reference and this gets correctly converted inside the loop. There are some other small updates around working with lists. IntelliJ IDEA suggests other areas where code can be simplified. There are a few new features around working with booleans and if statements. If you have an example like this one, where you have the same condition appearing in multiple if statements in an if else chain, you can now extract an if statement containing the first conditional and it will extract it from all of the branches. This works either on extract if statement or you can also do it on split into two ifs. Other if statements can be simplified to simple Boolean expressions. If you press Alt Enter on the if, you get the suggestion of replace if else with an or and here you can see it gets simplified into a Boolean expression. Using this technique may allow us to seriously simplify the code and make it easier to understand. IntelliJ IDEA 2018.2 highlights places where the compare method is used where it doesn't have to be. In this example, both foo.getValue and bar.getValue return an int value. In this case, there's no need to use integer.compare to compare these values. We can use a simple equals. In other cases, a wrapper may be being used where a primitive will do. IntelliJ IDEA can locate these places and replace these values with the primitive instead. Other areas allow us to get rid of unnecessary casting. 
In this example, we have a variable which is an object, but the object is populated with a string from somewhere else. When we cast the object to string, since we know this object is a string and is always being used as a string, we can simply change the type to a string and removes the unnecessary cast. Another update is when you're passing the incorrect type into a method, not only could you change the value in that method or create a new method on the object, you can change the type of your variable so that it matches the method declaration. This works with variables and with fields. IntelliJ IDEA 2018.2 detects places where we're calling get class on an object which is already of type class. In this example, we have an event class, which is a class, and we call get class. This will result in class.class, .class, which is probably not what we intended. The inspection gives us two possible quick fixes. We can replace this with class.class, .class, which is what's actually happening in this code, or we can remove the get class call which is probably the intention of the method in the first place. Another new quick fix has been added. If you're calling an annotation with an unknown value, you have the option to surround this parameter value with quotes and treat it as a string instead of a variable. IntelliJ IDEA now detects places where a type argument is declared where it's not needed, for example, on methods that don't take generic types. If you're using a generic type that hasn't been declared somewhere, now there's the ability to add this generic type to an appropriate class. There's a new quick fix that works on the implicit usage of platform's default char set inspection. Now, instead of just warning you of this usage, you can actually add standard char sets UTF-8 to the method call. There's a new intention on the return statement. If the return is a complex expression, you can optionally put this complex expression into a variable. This might aid readability of the code by giving the variable a readable name. The optional inspections have been updated to also detect places where an optional is being compared with null. This might be an error since optionals should not be null. It may be left over from migrating towards an optional type. And now IntelliJ IDEA can detect places where string joiner is being used with no delimiter, where it can be replaced with a simple string concatenation. IntelliJ IDEA 2018.2 contains lots of updates for analyzing the data flow. This lets the IDE point out places which have potential bugs. One of the first things you'll notice is you can actually see the results of this analysis. If you press Shift, Control, and P twice on a type, you can see the constraints which the IDE knows about. In this case, this object is not a string or a number because that's already escaped from this method. If you try this on an optional type, for example, it will show you if it knows whether the optional is present or not. Trying this on numeric values will show you the ranges of values that the IDE knows are valid for this value. IntelliJ IDEA 2018.2 knows about empty lists. If you initialize an array list as an empty list and then try and get a value from that list, IntelliJ IDEA tells you that this is going to cause an index out of bounds exception. IntelliJ IDEA 2018.2 also adds implicit annotations to show you if an unmodifiable view is being returned from a method. This allows it to do further analysis on code that calls these methods. For example, here, we're trying to add something to one of these immutable lists. IntelliJ IDEA 2018.2 can unroll stream.of calls of up to three values and analyze the contents of these. So it can give you information about the values here. As mentioned, this works for up to three values. If you add another value, IntelliJ IDEA can't show you any more information about that. There are new warnings for is instance calls here the class.isInstance is always going to be false since the class is always a string, an integer, or a boolean and is never a value. There are lots of other small changes like the ability to apply fixes in single steps instead of having to go through more than one step. Support has been added for more Hamcrest matches to allow analysis of things like optional or null values. And support has been added to analyze static values. Here, for example, we have a string which is always foo, a string which is always bar, and the IDE can make certain assumptions based on those values. So we can see that foo never starts with bar, foo never contains bar. The last index of O in foo is never going to be zero, and the square root of four is never one. We can simplify these expressions if that makes our code more readable. Thanks for watching.